as they say. As they say, <laughs> lots of people have just been refreshing that forecast. I know a lot of people are tuning in right now trying to get that up to date information. So what's it looking like? Oh, well, uh, I wish it looked better than what it does. Uh, mm -hmm. We've definitely got the threat for showers and storms in the morning. Uh, we know it's going to rain during the flying pig tomorrow. It looks like it's going to come after the start, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit, you know, I'm a glass half full type of guy, so <laughs> right. I'm trying to find a way to find the positive side of this. And the fact is, is that the round of showers and storms that we're tracking Fingers crossed, hopefully we'll move in and move out just as fast. So that's what we're kind of watching here as we head into tomorrow morning. So right now everything's quiet, but there are some signs of what's to come. Now on the fringes of our viewing area, we do have a little bit in the way of some shower and downpour activity ongoing over there in Indiana. It's dropping down 71 from, for example, to the west of Versailles, west of Madison, Indiana. This will stay generally to our south, but it represents essentially a warm front that is working its way across the tri-state and after midnight we very well could see a few scattered downpours around here however the main event though is not coming until after the sun has come up it seems right now there's additional showers and storms with lightning north and west of Indianapolis, but this is what I'm really tracking for first thing tomorrow morning, and that is a cluster of severe thunderstorms out across western Illinois and northeastern Missouri. This is what we were talking about would be so tricky to track until they actually develop. But now that these storms have developed, we kind of have an idea of where they're going to go. They're still almost 400 miles away from Cincinnati, right? All indications are that these storms will continue to travel east as you go to bed here and basically be here towards sunrise tomorrow morning or a little bit after the sun has come up. So we've got scattered showers and storms to begin your Sunday here. And obviously, I think that impacts the start of flying pig in the morning. It easily could be a case where the race gets off on time, but I think it's going to be interrupted or at the very least going to be delayed once these storms move through. So let's break down both the bad and the good. The bad is the rain and storms arrive mid morning, so it's after the start of the race and before many folks have finished. I'm thinking eight, nine o'clock storms are moving in or at least knocking on the door. The good news is the fact that the main threats we're concerned about being lightning, the potential for maybe a few pockets of gusty winds and maybe a small hail threat. I think the opportunity for that is relatively narrow, even though the rain may continue several more hours even after the worst has passed. So they'll run in the rain, right? But you can't run with the lightning and the potential for any severe weather. Now the overall severe threat it's relatively low here tonight. The greatest concern is really the lightning posed to runners out there, but I can't rule out a few pockets of gusty winds, maybe some small hail, and certainly the potential with heavy rain as those storms come through. So again, just kind of showing you what's going to happen here as we go into the night. Here we are, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Watch what happens. Here comes those storms. Notice how fast they're dropping to the south and east too by nine and then by 10. The worst is already to our east. I can envision a little thunder and lightning lasting probably an hour or so, but by 11 or probably even before then, I think the worst is out of here. So it may be a case where we're able to simply put in a delay for the race tomorrow morning. Outside right now, you know, we've had that south breeze. If you've been out this evening, you can feel the atmosphere changing just a little bit. It's a little bit muggier out there. In fact, look at the dew point and the humidity, both on the rise with a south wind. So temperatures that are in the mid 60s now, they're not really going to fall much overnight tonight. So when you wake up in the morning, we're still going to be within a handful of degrees of the 60 degree mark. So maybe a few downpours after midnight, but the main event will probably come again a little after sunrise between about 7 and 9 a.m. It's when I anticipate the arrival of that cluster of showers and storms into the area. So again, there's the showers and downpours on the edge of the viewing area that will work in here probably within the next couple of hours. So a little rain late, muggier, will drop to close to 60 tomorrow. Early storms, but then dry by afternoon, warm and humid, 76. So the storms will be early. After that, it's just kind of cloudy and muggy for the rest of the afternoon. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. However, it looks like Lindsay and Curtis, the threat for stormy weather likely to continue at least into Monday and Tuesday. Hence the reason why we keep the weather impact icons going through at least midweek. Like Kevin said, fingers crossed.